Every week, there's a new AI tool making headlines. And right now, there are more AI video generators than ever, but most of them don't work as well as you'd expect. Some generate great videos, but only if you stay within their style limits. If you try to get more creative, like detailed anime or wild fantasy worlds, they often mess up, and most of the time, they're too expensive or just confusing to use. I've tested every major tool that's come out recently, and I've seen where they shine and where they completely fall apart. So in this video, I'm going to show you the AI video tools that actually deliver the kind of quality you'd want to publish, the best way to use them without wasting hours learning clunky software, and the one platform that ties everything together so you can create full videos without switching between five different sites. Let's break it down. All right, let's start with Cdance 1.0. Cdance is ByteDance's flagship AI video generator, the same company behind TikTok, and it's currently ranked number one on the leading video AI benchmarks. And unlike most tools that glitch out when you get specific, Cdance was built for precision and it actually follows your complex prompts. If you've tried video generators before and felt limited, this one changes the game. To use it, I'm heading into the text to video tab and selecting Cdance in the drop down menu. By the way, if you want to know how I axe all of the AI models in just one tool, it's because I use OpenArt. I'll leave a link to it down below so that you can follow along. Cdance supports both image and text generation, but for now, we're starting fresh with a prompt. Now I'll type in my prompt. For example, a lone cyberpunk courier speeds through a neon lit city on a futuristic motorcycle. Rain falls in slow motion, bouncing off chrome surfaces and glowing street signs. The camera tracks from behind as the bike swerves between flying cars and under flickering holograms. Midway, the courier skids around a corner and removes their helmet, revealing a determined expression. In the distance, a tower explodes in a pulse of electric blue light. Moody, high contrast lighting, reflective puddles, 24 FPS, cinematic motion blur. As you can see, I try to be as in-depth as I possibly can. This is very important for all models we are gonna cover today. The more specific you are in your prompt, the better the result will come out. But I get that for a beginner, this can be challenging. So I've come up with a simple solution to help you out. To create a very in-depth prompt, I head to ChatGPT and paste in this prompt. Create a super in-depth prompt for an AI-generated video using Cdance model. The prompt idea is a lone courier speeding through a neon on lit city on a futuristic motorcycle. This simple prompt will now give us an in-depth prompt that should cover all the important bases and get you the best possible result. Once that's in, I hit auto enhance. This feature will improve our prompt even better and make sure that all the things ChatGPT missed will get covered and you will get the absolute best results you can get. Now for the settings, I'm setting quality mode to pro, which gives us that realistic look, cleaner detail and smoother motion. For duration, I'm setting it to five seconds. It's a nice balance between giving the video enough time to breathe without dragging the generation time. For resolution, I'm choosing 1080p since we want the best possible quality out of the model. And for aspect ratio, I'm going with cinema, which is 16 by nine. Then I just click create and in about 60 to 90 seconds, the video is done. Now the quality here is actually pretty good. The motorcycle looks great and the character really follows the prompt well. The main issue I had was the environment. I asked for a high-tech city, flying cars and flickering holograms, but what I got looked more like a regular street in Korea. That said, the explosion and other visual elements came out well. So if you're after an AI video generator that can give you polished five to 10 second clips quickly, this one definitely holds up. Now for image to video, I switched to the image to video tab in the top left corner and again selected the Cdance model. For this video, I'm uploading an illustration of Darth Vader and then I type in the description, the characters forward slowly as their cape ripples in the wind. Lights flicker around them and smoke rolls in from both sides. The red lightsaber ignites with a flash and the camera pushes in dramatically while embers float through the air. Here we can't select auto enhance, so try to be as specific as you can. Then I select the pro for the quality mode again, as well as five seconds for the duration and the maximum possible resolution. And then I click create. This one turned out well, it follows the prompt perfectly. The environment is impressive too, with background characters and those iron structures actually moving, which adds a lot of life to the scene. Darth Vader looks spot on, especially the cape animation, the lightsaber glow, and the surrounding fog. Honestly, this is the kind of result I could see myself actually using in a project or posting. It's that good. Cdance 1.0 is a great option if you're looking for quick realistic style clips that still follow your prompt pretty closely. It's perfect for things like social posts, mood boards, content previews, or generating assets for a larger video project. But if you're aiming for ultra realistic visuals or film grade output, like something you'd get from other tools in today's lineup, then this probably won't cut it. Still, for fast iteration and creative idea testing, 
It's one of the best in its tier. But what if you want something way different? Something that feels animated from the ground up with bold art direction or hand-drawn movement? That's exactly where Pixverse comes in. It's not made for super realism or photorealistic visuals. Instead, it's focused on artistic expression, exaggerated motion, and clear visual identity. We'll start with the text to video tab. And from the model dropdown, I'm selecting Pixverse 4.5. That's currently the latest and best version available. Now it looks similar to other models, but you'll notice there are a few extra style related controls here that matter more when you're going for animation. So I'll type in my prompt. A grandfather and his young grandson sit at a wooden table inside a rustic cabin during golden hour. Sunlight pours in through the dusty windows, casting warm rays across their faces as they carve a wooden toy boat together. The camera slowly pans from the window to the table, capturing the gentle flicker of a fireplace in the background. Dust particles float in the sunbeam. Realistic facial animation, natural color grade, 24 FPS, soft lens blue. Now let's look at the setting. There are three resolution options. Turbo is the fastest, but gives lower visual quality. This one is good for fast draft. 720p is solid previews or smaller content. And 1080p is best if you want high enough quality for publishing or editing directly into a final video. I'm gonna go with 1080p here. Below that, you've got the aspect ratio options. Cinema is your standard YouTube or widescreen format. Portrait is ideal for TikTok, shorts, or reels. Square is flexible across platforms. And there's also a classic option if you're going for a retro or vintage feel. For this one, I'm choosing cinema and setting the duration to five seconds. You can also go with eight seconds, but the generation time will get longer and the quality will also suffer. Then I just hit generate. And here's the result. The camera pan from the window to the table works beautifully. The lighting nails that golden hour glow and you can clearly see the fireplace flickering softly in the back. Now, even though this leans more toward realism, you can still see that stylized, almost hand-drawn edge in the way the textures and shading are rendered. It feels like a blend between animated film and live action, which makes Pixverse perfect when you want emotional storytelling with an artistic twist. Now we're moving into image to video. This part gives you a bit more control by letting you set both a start frame and an end frame, which is useful when you want smoother transitions or simulate camera movement across scenes. So for this start frame, I'm uploading a close-up illustration of an astronaut astronaut looking out of a spaceship window. And then for the end frame, I'm uploading a wide shot of the astronaut on the surface of an alien planet. Now for the animation prompt, I'm typing, start with a close-up of the astronaut's visor, then slowly zoom out to reveal the full landing scene on an alien planet. Include the astronaut's suit shifting slightly, the mist moving across the ground, and soft pulsing light from the alien plants. Keep the style consistent with smooth motion and atmospheric effects throughout. Same as before, I'm keeping it at 1080p and setting the duration to five seconds. Then I hit generate. Now here's the output. The cut between frames looks a little off in this one. That's probably on me. I might've picked two images that didn't blend together perfectly in motion. So feel free to go and test it out with some better images yourself. But even with that, you can see the potential of this feature. The slow zoom out, the seamless transformation, the glow from the plants, it all shows up and follows the animation prompt really closely. This start to end frame setup is a great tool when you want to create transitions between scenes or maintain visual flow in stylized formats like motion comics, explainer intros, or short animated stories. So Pixverse, is the go-to tool when you want stylized video content. It's not for realism, but if you want something that looks like it was animated by hand with real visual personality, this is one of the best options out there. What makes it stand out is how well it sticks to the prompt. You can be very specific and it actually shows up in the result. And with this start to end frame feature, you can build consistent transitions and control the flow of your animation in a way most tools don't allow. But while Pixverse gives you those visuals, what if you need something more grounded? Something that looks like a real real person that is moving naturally without needing motion capture or a studio setup. That's where Kling comes in. If you're building talking head content, persona-led videos, or anything where a character's performance needs to feel real, this model is built for that. From the model drop-down menu, I'm choosing Kling 2.1. That's the most recent version and it's delivering the best result. In the input panel, I'll type in, a masked swordswoman sprints across the rooftops of a burning city at night, crimson cape flowing in the wind. Lightning cracks overhead as the camera orbits her mid-jump between two buildings. She draws her glowing katana and in one fluid motion, slices through a drone mid-air. Sparks and debris scatter in slow motion. Stylized animated lighting, 
Rain FX, Particle Trails, 60 FPS, Ultra Dramatic. Now I'm toggling Auto Enhance to level up the prompt automatically. I set duration to 5 seconds, and under that, I select Cinema since this is a widescreen scene. And this is the final result. You can see how Kling handled the action here. The rooftop jump, the cape movement, even the glowing katana strike midair. The animation style isn't perfect, and some motion might feel a little too smooth or stiff in places, but overall, it nails the scene well enough to feel dynamic and engaging. The lightning, rain effects, and dramatic lighting all show up, and the framing holds up even with the fast motion. This kind of result is really solid for intros, short form content, or even concept scenes for a story based video. Now let's try image to video. I'm uploading a digital portrait of a futuristic soldier, and for the animation prompt, I'm typing in animate the soldier stepping forward through smoke and rubble as distant explosions light up the shattered skyline behind him. The camera slowly pushes in, slightly tilting upward to emphasize his stature. Sparks drift through the air as wind whips his coat. The plasma rifle hums with light, and the soldier looks toward the horizon as a mech silhouette emerges in the distance. High contrast lighting, deep shadows, gritty post-apocalyptic tone, 60 FPS, cinematic depth of field. Then I pick Pro in quality mode because it gives cleaner visuals without extreme render time. But if your goal is super good quality, you can go with Master. And if you just want something quick, I would go with standard. After that, I hit create. And once again, Kling really delivers on this one. The camera motion feels purposeful and the coat moves with the wind. Sparks drift through the air naturally and the lighting hits that gritty, war-torn vibe perfectly. Finally, Let's explore element mode. Right now, it's only available in Kling 1.6, which is an older version. This feature lets you drag and drop up to four separate images. So for example, you could upload a background, character cutout, maybe a prop like a weapon or object, and even a foreground element like smoke or lighting. Kling then tries to animate all of them together into one seamless video. Now to be clear, this is still experimental, so it's not perfect. You might run into some overlap issues or weird blending if the assets don't match well. That's why I recommend keeping the duration short, ideally under 5 seconds, and always choosing pro quality to get the cleanest result. It's a cool option if you want to test out ideas or build basic composite scenes without jumping into a full video editor. Just know its limitations and use it more for creative tests than polished outputs. So Kling gives you control over all the little touches, and if you're creating content where a digital character is doing the important stuff, like persona style YouTube videos, dialogue scenes, TikToks with a main character, or even faceless videos that still need a human element, Kling is built for that. That said, it's not designed for sweeping cinematic shots or lightning fast generation. But when it comes to realism, presence, and performance, Kling absolutely delivers. Now if you want to take that realism to a full cinematic level, where the lighting, camera movement, and scene composition feel like a movie, this is where Google VO really shows its strength. But this comes at a cost. VO costs a lot more than all the other competitors. Now let's actually see what results we get. As usual, I select VO3 from the drop-down menu, and for the prompt I paste in, a young woman in a red dress walks barefoot through a foggy forest at dawn. The camera follows her from behind as mist swirls around her legs. Birds take off from nearby branches as she looks up, revealing streaks of morning light piercing the dense trees. Her breath is visible in the cold air. She pauses by a moss-covered stone and sings, I remember this place. Naturalistic lighting, handheld style movement, soft depth of field, 24 FPS, cinematic tone. Next, I turn on auto enhance and audio. And this is the result. I remember this place. The atmospheric detail here is what really stands out. You've got that soft, natural lighting cutting through the fog, subtle camera sway like it's handheld, and even the mist reacting to her movement. And that's exactly what VO does best. Environmental realism, dynamic light behavior, and smooth cinematic camera motion that actually feels like it was shot by a real crew. It's those small elements like depth of field, frame pacing, and natural motion that make the scene feel truly believable. Now let's switch to image to video. I reselect VO3, upload a futuristic city at sunset, then I'm typing in this prompt. Animate a slow cinematic fly-through over the futuristic city during golden hour. Begin at rooftop level, gliding past illuminated towers with reflective glass facade. Flying cars weave between skyscrapers below, leaving behind soft light trails. As the camera ascends, the sun dips below the horizon, casting long shadows and rich orange-pink tones across the skyline. Light flares shimmer off surfaces, and atmospheric haze adds depth, high dynamic range, smooth 24 FPS motion, subtle camera shake for realism. Then I hit create, 
and let it process. And what we get back is honestly pretty impressive. The reflections off the glass, the glow from the cars, even the way the haze builds as the camera moves up, VO captures those cinematic layers really well. It still keeps the sketch style intact, but adds enough depth and motion that it feels like a living world. VO3 is built for cinematic level visuals. It's the kind of tool you reach for when you're working on high-end projects like short films, trailers, concept ads, or anything where visual polish actually matters. It nails things like complex camera moves, lens simulations, realistic lighting, and motion depth. But it's not fast. Renders take longer than most AI video generators. So if your goal is ultra polished cinematic results and you're okay with a bit more wait time and setup, VO is absolutely worth it. But if you're a fast moving content creator, posting daily, experimenting quickly, or working on a tight budget, there are better tools for your flow. At this point, one thing should be clear. There isn't a single AI video tool that outshines the others. They all are great at what they do, but the biggest problem we still haven't solved is the large amount of AI video generators that exist. You sign up for VO because it's the best today, then a week later, Kling releases a massive update that blows everything else out of the water. Now what? You're stuck with a subscription you already paid for, while the new best option is sitting behind another paywall. That's the constant challenge with AI video right now. The tools evolve so fast that you are always feeling behind. Either you're switching platforms every week, trying to figure out how each one works, or you're burning cash trying to stay subscribed to all of them. But it doesn't need to stay this way. And the solution was right in front of your eyes this whole video, and it's OpenArt. It's the platform I've been using throughout this entire video. OpenArt brings all the best AI video models under one roof, and you don't need to be switching sites, learning different systems, or paying hundreds of dollars to have all AI video generators, you have them all in one dashboard. And the only thing you need to do is pick the tool you want to use. Kling, VO, Pixverse, Hilo, or any other AI generator that we haven't covered today. But what is truly revolutionary about OpenArt is that when a new AI model drops, OpenArt adds it immediately. You don't need to request access, spend hours searching for links on Reddit, or wait on a beta invite. It's already accessible and ready to use on OpenArt, and they don't leave you figuring it out on your own. They include guides and walkthroughs for each model, so you know exactly how to get the most out of it. And it's not because they want you to pay more, it's because OpenArt really cares about each and every user, and that's why I rely on it. It keeps me working with the best tools available without all the hassle. So if you're serious about using the top AI video tech without losing time or money, OpenArt is what you want to be using. There's a link in the description so you can check it out for yourself. I highly recommend it.